Welcome back everybody to another SOLIDWORKS tutorial. Today I'm going to show you how to do custom threads 3D very very accurately in SOLIDWORKS using a swept cut function. Now this is not using the thread tool. This is just completely on your own. You can tweak it however you want. It allows it to be a fully custom thread. So we're just going to hop right into it. We're just going to get going. Right, I'm gonna try and do my best to not use any of the hotkeys. That way you guys can see exactly what I'm doing. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna make our basic bolt structure. Now I'm, I do this using a revolved boss base system. And what we're gonna shoot for today is a two and a half inch diameter thread by a four TPI. So that's an Acme thread. So we're just gonna need to make this two and a half inches long and we're gonna make the length of the thread five inches we're just gonna make this a nice bolt we'll make the head we'll make it four inches tall make that an inch tall fully defined we'll hop up to our features and do a revolved boss yep it's gonna yell at me and then we do axis of revolution around that one cool now we have our basic bolt structure now, in order for this to actually look like a bolt, the first thing we got to do is actually go through and chamfer the end. Because otherwise, it just doesn't look right. It's a quarter inch transfer, chamfer, and go from here. Now, this is where things get a little bit technical. So we're going to go to insert curve helix spiral. Now it's asking for a plane or something that contains a circle. It uses that circle to define where the helix starts from. So you select your end face, get your circle. Actually, the better way to do this is to convert this outside diameter circle because then you can go back and change your diameter here and actually dynamically change the thread. So when you click exit sketch, it kicks out this helix. Now, since this is a four TPI thread, this pitch becomes 0.25 of an inch. Now this is going the wrong direction, so we need to spin this around. And what I like to do is I like to get the thread to start at the top because later on you will see exactly why. So now our thread will start at the top and it will progress. Now there's a whole bunch of different things that define this helix, whether it's pitch revolution, height, revolution, different spiral, so on and so forth. But pitch is obviously the easiest thing to do for threads because it is the same. So this will actually get it all the way to the end, but we don't want it to go all the way. Simply for the fact that when we cut it, it'll actually cut into this face. So we need to take this back about half a thread length. Now that is our helix that it's going to cut the thread along. But now we need to give it a profile to cut. So this doesn't really need to be exactly on the thread itself. You can almost even do it off to the side to make it easier to see what you're doing. Now an Acme thread is defined by an included angle between the faces of 29 degrees. So you can dimension it like so and then put a a line to make everything symmetric about. So this is attached to the midpoint of this line so it's perfectly in the middle. And what I like to do is to take this, this, and this next th piece. Make all of these construction lines because we're not actually cutting that. We're going to be cutting this profile out of this solid piece. So we actually need to close this in. Now this and this need to be on the same line, which also needs to be on the same line as this edge up here. That ensures that this is going to cut right up to this edge and not cut any deeper. Now I use a resource called Engineer's Edge. Now I use a resource called Engineer's Edge that gives you a basic setup 
for Acme threads. Now, we don't actually know exactly how deep this thread is because it's not given in a standard chart, and that's the glory of this. It doesn't have to be standard. It can be completely custom. So through some calculations, we can figure out that a 0.25 TPI Acme thread actually has a thread depth of 0.27 over 2, giving us 0.14 inches. Now this is where having this kind of extra fake thread comes in handy. because so we just need to make this equal. You should actually put a second symmetry constraint between these two. That way everything is held consistent. And now this is where our 0.25 TPI comes in. So you select this point and this point, and this needs to be 0.25 of an inch. Now this looks really weird because we don't have this in this section being made equal. Now that brings everything into focus and you can say, okay, this isn't defined completely. It's because it can do this kind of motion. So all we need to do is take this, made it to that. And now our thread itself is fully defined. Now this is where the magic happens. It's time to sweep cut that entire axis. This is our sketch profile, and this is our helix. Now, as you can see, once we do this, and we hide this helix, now we have something that is essentially an Acme bolt. Now, this could never be made like this because there's no run out. So I'll clean this up a little bit. And in a production environment, you're gonna undercut this end right down to the minor diameter, which we know that this is down 0.27 divided by two, and we'll cut it over a quarter of an inch. We'll revolve that around that axis, clean it up, and now, you have an actually manufacturable part with a correct chamfer on the end to start it. Now to finish up our bolt, we need to put a hex on the head because then we need a way to hold it all. This goes one, two sides, three sides, four sides, five sides, and six sides. Just need to make that a constraint there to give it somewhere to start from. And if we go through and make all of these equal, there's our hex. Extrude to cut, flip the side through everything. And there you have it. There is your Acme bolt from scratch with a custom thread, not using the thread feature. Hopefully you find this interesting. Hopefully you learned something. If you do, please like, subscribe. Hopefully you had a good time and have a nice day.